So the two things that uh, I want to talk about that motivates my research is based on my experience and interest in product development of complex systems and search and rescue operations. And I will narrow it down to man-machine collaborations. In search and rescue, let's say we have a missing person uh, that needs to be rescued. We first need to find this person. Uh, this can be very challenging sometimes. The terrain can be rough, the, the weather can be harsh, and can be unsafe at some times to, to navigate in this area. We have different types of uh, tools that can aid us in accomplishing our mission, such as uh, having a tablet with the, the information that I need, such as where am I, where I'm supposed to go, where is my uh, mission area, where are my teammates, um, which uh, area is most likely the missing person is. We also have other types of tools, such as uh, aerial drones that can give us a, a big picture from the sky and establish some sense of situational awareness. You all have different types of transportation, like ATVs, snowmobiles, that can transport people, and radio communication through uh, the terrain. To add to this complexity, we also have the search management operation, those who plan and uh, issue orders to the different uh, teams out in the nature. Uh, they are collecting the intel and uh, uh, add it with statistics to uh, see which area to first navigate. It can be very hectic and it's also very hectic out in the, in the environment. And we need to be careful not to bring too much information to the, the user of <coughs> that is out in the nature here. Because it can be information overflow and you can be stuck by looking at only the info, uh, on the technology. You need to look out for the missing person. So let's take a step on the side and, uh, and imagine there's a team of developers there who, who are developing an autonomous drone system that will help the search and rescue operations. How do they navigate in this environment? Like, where, where do we start developing? Where are we? What, what are the teams uh, who are we? Who do we have on the team and how do we use their skills and knowledge? And how do we find the, the risks and uh, opportunities? Let us just narrow it down even further and say that we have a team of, uh, or three of them, uh, are working together to, to make this autonomous drone. Uh, let's say it's a black box, we don't really know what it is or what it should do. And we have an interactive designer, a project manager maybe, and um, and uh, some type of software developers. The interactive designer may be more focused on the, the human part of the system, uh, doing human factors uh, work, uh, working around the human-centric design principles. And while the data software or the software developers may look more into the robotics, uh, do the, the drone, uh, choose the right flight uh, path that is suitable in the search and rescue operation. And does does it? How feasible is it in the environment it operates in? While the project manager may be more concerned, do we comply with the contract? Do we fulfill all the requirements that we are having? Uh, is the spec okay? Uh, and do we? do this within the budget and timeline. So they, they have different types of views and interests. They also have different types of skills and knowledge. But sometimes it's good to bring everyone to the same page to know what we are talking about, to iron out these struggles, these conflicts, this tension between interests. And one way of bridging this uh, let's say, struggle or opportunities, I would say maybe conceptual modeling uh, as a bridging tool. Conceptual modeling is a way to simplify the world we are living in, which is very complex, into something that is manageable, but also having it be realistic enough to make sense. I will uh, highlight maybe three, three approaches, conceptual modeling approaches. To, that can help you in establishing some common 
uh, context, uh, empathy, and um, seeing the dynamics play, like see how the dynamics plays around in your system. And one of them is storytelling, where you build up the world the system is working in, and you're establishing the main characters and how they interact with each other. You're establishing the plot and how the mission goes. And you can also do some type of uh, drafting. Uh, that's another way of doing it. Uh, do a lot of sketching to illustrate the, the concepts of operation. You have something to point at at the meetings. You can uh, use this with the end users to ask, is this correct? And the third uh, conceptual modeling approach that I want to highlight is the models that kind of establish the dynamic behavior in the system. Because we have a lot of humans that interact with each other, and we have a lot of machines that interact with each other, and we have human-machine interaction. And all of this also interact with the environment. So it's about establishing these uh, subsystems and be aware of them. And then you can use these in, uh, in your meetings or in workshops with uh, the different types of stakeholders that you have. And you can more easily be fast on the same page and discuss the right things instead of uh, bypassing uh, talking about different things and interests. And overall, I hope that this can help in making a good systems design that fulfill the mission success. And it's in this case, it is simply about just saving life. And that concludes my presentation. <laughs>